This video serves as an introduction to the MP3236 EPC group of progressive two-barrel carburetors. The MP3236 EPC progressive two-barrel carburetors are available in four styles. Manual choke using a cable to operate the choke. Water choke using water temperature to operate the choke. And electric choke using a 12 volt element to operate the choke. The 3236 EPCF features an electric choke and is used on all of our VW applications. The EPC 3236 A, M, and E carburetors are similar to the Weber DGV series and features larger and more square air horns. The throttle rotates in a counterclockwise motion. The EPC 3236 F is found in our VW kits and is a mirror image of the other EPC progressive carbs with the primary and secondary barrel position reversed in the carburetor body the throttle rotates in a clockwise motion this carburetor is similar to the Weber DFV also known as Holly Weber after the Holly 5200 series they can easily be identified by the diamond shaped air cleaner mounting design they come with an electric choke all of the EPC progressive carbs as well as the Weber DFV and DGV function and adjust the same and share almost all of their calibrated parts. Each carburetor can be identified by the number etched or stamped in the base. All of these carburetors feature these identical features. Infinite tunability, a mechanical secondary, diaphragm type accelerator pump circuits and a power valve circuit to facilitate low vacuum running conditions. Excellent drivability, excellent fuel economy, improved performance, easy installation, and all at a reasonable cost. Of course the main feature is the mechanical progressive secondary linkage. As the primary butterfly reaches approximately 50% open, the secondary begins to open via mechanical linkage until at full throttle both barrels are wide open. 32 millimeter barrel for standard driving and fuel economy and the 36 millimeter barrel for power when you need it. Economy and performance. Let's locate and identify the components. We'll start by removing the top. First remove the carburetor top screws. Remove the sir clip on the choke linkage. Be sure not to lose this clip. Then release the choke butterfly linkage arm. Then carefully remove the top, making certain not to damage the float or the reusable top gasket. Also make sure that the float pivot pin stays in place. Support the float as you remove the top to prevent damage. The top holds the adjustable float and the needle and seat. With the carburetor top off, this is a great time to check the float level. The float level is a critical part of carburetor calibration. Changing the float level in the bowl will change the point that the main circuit starts to feed, alter the characteristics of an emulsion tube, and affect drivability and fuel consumption. Float level, in millimeter, refers to the distance from the face of the carburetor top cover to the float. With the top cover held vertically, float pivot at the top, and the float tab resting against but not depressing the spring-loaded ball in the needle valve. Measure the distance between the face of the carburetor top cover to the top or bottom of the float. The suggested float levels for each carburetor are listed on these slides. Or use my low-tech method and adjust the float to be close to parallel with the carburetor top. At the bottom of the float bowl, you will find the main fuel jets. 
These jets control the maximum amount of fuel to enter each circuit. The main circuits are active from about 2500 RPM to wide open throttle. At the bottom of the float bowl you will also find the power valve which facilitates low vacuum running conditions. The jets at the top are the main air correctors. They control the amount of air that enters the circuit. Each jet is marked with its size for easy identification. Between the main jet and the air corrector is the emulsion tube which regulates the air to fuel ratio via a series of strategically placed holes. All of the 3236 progressive two barrel carburetors share the same location for calibrated components. The idle, or low speed jets, are located on the sides of the carburetor. They are accessible with the carb intact and on the vehicle. The idle jet controls how much fuel is delivered at idle and up to about 2500 RPM. The idle jet is held in place by the idle jet holder. You must separate the idle jet from the holder. Each jet is marked with its size. This is where you will find the only calibration part that differs between the two carburetor styles. The idle jets and jet holders on the EPCE and Weber DGV carburetors are larger in size and are seated with an O-ring. Here are the calibration components for the MPEPC and Weber DGV carburetor series. Note the O-ring for the idle jet holders. And the calibration components for the MPEPC Weber DFV series. At rest, the choke butterflies are closed. The fast idle screw is in contact with the choke fast idle cam, holding the choke butterflies closed. Open the choke butterfly by hand and hold open while the linkage is operated to clear the choke cam. You will hear a click as it is released. Then check the fast idle screw under the choke assembly to confirm that it is not in contact with the choke fast idle cam. Set the idle speed screw by backing it out until it is not in contact with the throttle stop. Turn it in until it just makes contact with the lever. Then turn in one to one and a half turns. Here I have removed the throttle linkage arm to give you a better view of the relationship between the throttle speed screw and the stop. This adjustment is critical. The most common mistake is not adhering to this adjustment procedure, setting the idle speed using only this speed screw, opening the throttle plate too far, exposing a progression port, which renders the idle circuit inoperable. Poor performance and black smoke at the exhaust will surely follow. While preset from the factory, to adjust the tension or position of the choke butterfly, loosen the three retaining screws and turn the choke element to increase or decrease tension.
Preset the idle mixture screw by first screwing in until the screw lightly bottoms out. Do not use too much force or you will damage the needle at the end of the screw or the seat on the carburetor. Now back the mixture screw out two full turns. Now start your engine. Your engine won't sound that good yet. Actually, it'll barely run at this low RPM. But as long as it stays barely running, it's okay. Idle speed is not important at this point. Turn the idle mixture screw in slowly until the engine begins to die. Then turn it out slowly, one quarter turn at a time, until the engine runs its best. If you open the screw more and the engine stays the same, Turn it back until you're at the point where the engine ran the best. You are doing this by sound to achieve the initial best idle. Once you have found the setting where the engine runs best, you can adjust the idle speed screw to achieve your idle speed. In some applications, the idle mixture screw may be a little tougher to reach and adjust, like on the VW Bug, but this procedure is extremely important to the carburetor's performance. So take your time and repeat as many times as necessary to get it right. When completed, your engine should be running well. The mixture screw should be no more than two and a half turns out. If it is under or over, you may need to calibrate the carburetor better for your vehicle. Same with the idle speed screw. If it requires more than two turns out, recalibration will be necessary. Think of it this way, if the goal is to be two turns out on the mixture screw and it is only one turn out, the carburetor is telling you that the idle jet is too big and it wants less gas, a smaller idle jet is required. If the mixture screw is three turns out, then it wants more gas and a larger idle jet is required. Remember, the idle or low speed circuit is responsible for over 75% of driving operation, so take your time and make it right. Most carburetors are sensitive to fuel pressure. Too much fuel pressure can cause excessive fuel consumption and damage the carburetor. All Empy and Weber carburetors require no more than three pounds pressure, making installation of a good fuel pressure regulator a must. And now that you've seen the size of the jets and the carburetor passageways, it should be obvious why a good fuel filter or filters is also a must. Progressive carburetors work best with a vacuum advanced distributor. A vacuum advanced distributor advances the timing based on a vacuum signal sent by your intake system. Centrifugal advance works strictly by RPM. Your engine may require immediate spark advance and your RPM may not be high enough, keeping your engine waiting for the ignition timing it needs, causing a hesitation. Race cars run at wide open throttle, rich mixture, full load, and high RPM all the time, so most don't need a vacuum advance to deal with the full range of driving conditions encountered in street operation. Anyone driving a street-driven car without manifold connected vacuum advance is sacrificing idle cooling, throttle response, engine efficiency, and fuel economy. All the carburetors feature a manifold vacuum port, I prefer a real manifold vacuum taken from your manifold or your end casting. Time and patience in jetting and adjusting, combined with a functional vacuum advanced distributor, will result in an excellent performing system.